this next video then today is um, this one is for learners um, having said in my introductory video the short introductory video that I wouldn't really be doing learner teaching I thought this one might be a good one because uh, we're going to be covering dual carriageways and really it's uh, the things that learners need to know because there's quite a lot to think about when you're learning to do dual carriageways for the first time and so I thought uh, for those that are having dual carriageway lessons some of the information on here might be helpful I took a young man out yesterday for his first uh, actually his second session on dual carriageways, it was a two hour session and I felt it was difficult to get everything in really that I wanted him to uh, I wanted him to learn a lot depends of course on how quickly the learner picks up the information but I thought a video such as the one I'm about to make or this this video that I'm making now um, would really help the learning process it's no substitute of course for being actually on the road um, but it will help I hope those of you that are learners that are doing uh, dual carriageway lessons at the moment and of course for my own pupils too so what is a dual carriageway? Well we're coming into a dual carriageway right now it's uh, where the road is divided with a central reservation usually there'll be two lanes most normally two lanes in each direction sometimes there might be three uh, I don't remember seeing four at any time but the, the, the key thing is a dual carriageway has a central reservation separating the traffic travelling in each direction Speed limits on dual carriageways vary. Um, I have seen short ones that are only 20 miles an hour. The one I'm on at the moment is 30 miles an hour. They could be 40, 50, 60 or 70. Um, national speed limit for a single carriageway road is 60 but for a dual carriageway road it's 70. It's the same as for a motorway. And so at the moment I'm on dual carriageway. Um, and I'm going to try and keep this fairly simple for learners uh, just the basics but uh, quite a bit of information I think and hopefully it'll be useful now coming into two lane stretch each way and this is going to be dual carriageway again just now we've got the central reservation in the centre one of the first things to know about dual carriageways is you, you should drive in the left hand lane that's your normal lane for progress um, you only use the right hand lane if you need to overtake or pass parked vehicles and having done so you should always move back to the left hand lane um, I believe that if you hog as it were the right hand lane unnecessarily on your test uh, if there's no part vehicles no one behind there's no reason to drive in lane two then I think you might fail your test for doing that you should always move back to lane one now on an ordinary single carriageway such as I'm on at the moment uh, the principal danger when passing part vehicles of course is oncoming traffic you have to make sure on a single carriageway before you go around a park vehicle um, that there's no danger from oncoming well, of course on a dual carriageway there is no oncoming the danger is following traffic on a dual carriageway and therefore you have to use the MSM procedure uh, if you have to deal with a park vehicle or maybe a slow moving vehicle and I'm now back on to dual carriageway going to leave a little bit of space for this white car with his nose out on the left I'm looking at him so we're on dual carriageway traffic moving slowly ahead at the moment very slowly uh, I'm going to try and avoid comments other than what I need to say that you might need to know as a learner So the big help to dealing with dual carriageways 
uh, is to be looking well ahead. Um, as one of my trainers taught me, eyes on main beam. Keep your vision up. The, the, the advantage of doing that is you're going to see the parked vehicles sooner and in, in so doing you're allowing yourself much more time to react. Um, now the reason I'm staying on the right here is because I know from experience that the uh, the other side of the island, the other side of the roundabout, there's always parked cars on the left and it can be difficult to get back out to the right so that's why I'm staying on the right on this occasion. I'll have more to say about that as we proceed with this video. It's very busy just now. I think the children may be coming out of school. It's ten past three. So it might be the infants are coming out now which is causing the, the hold up. See the tyres on the car in front. I've gone a little bit forward to allow traffic to come out behind me. And I'm expecting to see part vehicles on the left and sure enough there it is. But I'm looking over the part vehicle on the left, looking further down the road. I can't see any more part vehicles although there's a lot of queuing traffic. off the roundabout now so I'm cancelling the signal. So what I'm looking for now is I know there's a parked vehicle on the left and I'm asking myself can I go back to the left after that parked vehicle or is there another? All the traffic at the moment is out in lane 2 but I can see a parked vehicle further down couple of hundred yards down, halfway out in the road, so there's no point going back to the left. When you're overtaking or passing a parked vehicle on a dual carriageway, don't weave in and out. As you're passing the first one, look and see if there are any more. And if there are and they're not too far away, then stay out in the right-hand lane. You don't really want to be weaving in and out. Now I'm just going to move to the left very slightly to look down the left-hand side here, and I think I can possibly move in to the left hand lane. I'm just going to wait, I think the taxi might have decided to stop here. Taxi drivers will often keep you guessing. Um, it's often because of course their, their fares will pull them up anywhere or they don't know quite where the address is that they're looking for. Now passing on the left is permissible when traffic is travelling slowly in a queue. Rule 163 in the Highway Code. Now this, this vehicle is parked so I'm going to have to indicate to move out. I've got a blue vehicle over my right shoulder and he has kindly dropped back for me. So I'm just going to thank him as I move across. And uh, I'll be a bit more wary now because there may be parked vehicles with the children coming out of school actually stopped on the left like this man on my immediate left here with his lights on. From further down the road you might have thought he was in the queue but he isn't, he's waiting for his little princess no doubt or his little prince as they like to call them. Even if it's a little horror. Looking down the right hand side now there's not much um, I can't see any problems on the left. So I am going to go back over to the left, checking the mirrors, making the signal, taking the left hand lane. I expect there will be some more parked vehicles but that should be fairly well up the road. There is a white vehicle I can see now up ahead and lots of other cars beyond that. So once I'm away here I'm going to be looking for my opportunity again to move out to the right. The advantage of course of using moving back to the left hand lane when you can is it eases the traffic flow, you're using two lanes instead of one. The vehicle behind me is waiting for me so we can move out. Now I've got a long Q 
few of vehicles on the left, most of them parked, one further up ahead with his lights on. So there's no point moving back in. Vehicle behind me is not pressing. I've got a roundabout coming up where I propose to go straight ahead. Now I'm looking down the left hand side of the blue car. I can see a vehicle indicating left down there. He might be pulling up or he might be turning left. So I'm going to stay where I am. I'm going to look across the roundabout before I decide which lane I want. And it's looking clear on the other side, but I've got traffic coming down on my left now, so I've got to stay out here. Now I have an opportunity to take the left lane. Looking across the roundabout, there are vehicles down there, but they're well down, so I've got time to get across before moving out. Looking to the right as we come into the roundabout, safe to go. Keeping well on the left on dual cageway roundabouts. If you're going straight and there's no arrows saying otherwise, go to the left, keep well on the left. Checking my mirrors now before we move out, signalling to move out for the white car behind me. And as I said earlier, the, the, the principal danger on a, a dual cageway is from traffic following. I'm in a 30 here, the vehicle behind me is a little too close but not dangerously so at the moment, although he is closing the gap. I'm doing a steady 30. I can see lots of parked vehicles on the left, but just before the plan board up ahead, the map if you like, uh, the parked vehicles are all stopping, so, or there are no more, so I'm going to move towards the centre line. The car behind me cannot now pass me on my left, and I can just move in. I'm going to signal for him and just safely move in without any fear about him. As I come into the left hand side, I'm still on dual cageway and I'm joining dual cageway. I'm going to signal left because I could go straight ahead here, giving way to traffic from the right, of course. All clear to go. So we're still on dual cageway. As soon as we make the turn, lift up the vision, look as far up the road as possible. Can't see a great deal at the moment because of the bus, so I'm keeping back from the bus um, to give myself as much vision ahead as I can get. Traffic coming out to join me on the right, and the bus is pulling up, so mirrors, signal, out to lane 2. He's not pulling up. That's okay, so we're looking further up the road now, well up the road, no parked vehicles. So it's rear mirror, rear mirror, that's the centre one, and near mirror, that's the curbside, and I'm signalling for following traffic and moving across the left. So the danger then on, on dual cageways is changing lanes when you've got following traffic. And we always use the MSM routine, so the first thing you're gonna do is check your mirrors. Now that bus is pulling up, so mirror, signal, and out to the right. Then your space behind me, signal off, and I'm gonna come back in after the bus, so mirror, mirror, left signal, and coming across to the left. I'm gonna take a fairly sharp left turn uh, at this light control roundabout. I left my signal on because I'm taking the left turn here. I have a few moments of single carriageway here so I can just uh, speak a little bit freely about the procedure um, and then we'll get back on dual carriageways in a minute or two. Mirror. So to repeat then, the danger on a dual carriageway is from following traffic and we always follow the MSM routine mirror, signal manoeuvre. So if I see a problem ahead, the next thing I would do is check my mirrors straight away. And at the moment on this single cageway there's nothing at all parked on the left. Um, but if there was, I'd be checking my mirror and thinking about going round that parked vehicle. And of course the skill on the, on the dual cageway is how to deal with the vehicle over your right shoulder if you're moving out. And um, if you check your mirrors first, if there is somebody over your right shoulder, watch him for a moment or two. If it looks as though he's keeping his distance, put your signal on, have another look at him, and if he's still keeping his distance, then you can move yourself out. The signal doesn't give you the right to change lanes. The signal is just to inform your intention. Supposed to. A lot of drivers, sadly, will just completely ignore your right signal. Sometimes it may be unavoidable, they may be, you know, um, not be able to react quickly enough. 
although I think if they were paying full attention they would but sometimes they will pass you on the right even when you have your right signal on even if you want to turn right the highway code says you shouldn't do that but lots of people don't read the highway code of course we're going straight on this roundabout taking the second exit I'm not saying everything I'm doing I'm not talking about all my mirrors and signals here that's not the purpose of this particular video we've just got to concentrate on the principles for um, dual cageways still on a single cageway for a moment or two cageway and you want to go straight on up to roundabout you're normally going to use the left hand lane if it's marked left only of course then you need to move out into the center or the right hand lane depending on whether they're up two or three lanes now it's a good practice in my view if you're approaching a dual cage you're approaching a roundabout on a dual cageway and uh, let's say if you're already out in lane two you're already in the right hand lane to look across the roundabout before you enter it to see if there's any vehicles parked on the far side close to the roundabout if so stay on the right if you're in the left hand lane approaching the roundabout uh, and you can see a vehicle parked close on the far side then if you have the opportunity take the right lane before the roundabout Sometimes if you wait till you're over the roundabout and you're then faced with a parked car you've got traffic coming from lane 2 and you get trapped on the left. So it's a good idea, again it's a question of having your vision up, having a high visual horizon, looking well ahead. Uh, <coughs> it can be quite a, a tricky skill for the learner but it's one worth getting to master looking across the roundabout on approach. I'm taking the left at this next roundabout. So I'm looking across the roundabout here, there's nothing from the far side but lots of inbound from the right. And I can see a space coming now. So once our friend in the uh, rover's gone, we can take her turn. Now this is deceptive, this is a particularly deceptive road because it looks as though it's dual carriageway, it's got a grass verge in the centre, but it isn't. So the council have gone to a lot of trouble to try and make it clear by painting arrows on the road and putting signs up saying two-way traffic. Uh, there didn't used to be all these signs and this is on one of the test routes from South Yardley and there were fails galore up here I believe because learners would think it was a dual cageway and drive on the wrong side of the road but it isn't. As you can see the arrows coming up and the arrows on the road and the hash marking down the centre to divide the lanes of traffic. Still lots of cars here. I think this is down to the school run. And there's a roundabout a little way ahead where I'm planning to turn uh, to turn left. So let's just recap some of the things we've said then. On a dual cageway you drive on the left unless you need to pass a slow moving vehicle or maybe a bicycle or a parked car and having done so if there are no more parked cars you then move back to the left I would not recommend for a moment that you stay out on the right on a learner test if there are no parked vehicles or obstacles on the left I think that might get, not might get you a fail it's a contravention of the highway code 
we use the MSM rule if we want to change lanes, whether we're going from lane 1 out to lane 2, that's from the left to the right, or whether we come back in from lane 2 to lane 1, we use the MSM procedure. So for example, if I see a parked car on the left, as I'm coming along the dual carriageway and I, and I move out, as I'm approaching that parked car, I'm then looking beyond it to see if there's any more. And if there's any more fairly close by, then we stay out on the right. But if there are no more, you then use your rear centre mirror, your rear view mirror, your rear mirror as I call it, and your near mirror, that's the one nearest the curb on your left, to see if it's safe to move back in. If there are any vehicles nearby, signal for them. If necessary, give them a moment longer to see whether they're going to come down your left hand side, because they will do that as well even though that is also a contravention of the highway code that's common behaviour undertaking as, it is, is, as it's called um, and we'll talk about that in a moment or two um, and if it's safe then to move across uh, you've got your signal on if it's necessary you move across but you do need to take a moment or two to keep checking the rear and left mirrors are they waiting before you come back in or are they waiting before you get out now I'm going to go left at the roundabout here Lots of traffic on the right, uh, in circuit, from the right. And I know from experience that there's always a car parked around this bend. So when I move out here, I'm going to try and go, if I can, straight into lane 2. That is the outer lane, the right-hand lane. Clear on the right at the moment. Got to wait for the Peugeot in front of me. I've got one coming around. So keeping the crossing clear. Now I have an opportunity. I'm going straight out to lane 2 because I know there's parked vehicles around here and there it is. Lifting up my vision, I've got more parked cars ahead sticking out in the road and looking well down the road further ahead there are more parked vehicles up there so we stay out on the right, there's no point weaving in and out, we stay out on the right. Quite a bit of traffic moving along in lane 2 up here. Looking for my opportunity to go back to the left, still got parked vehicles on the left. I'm looking through the trees, watching the lady on the right, looking through the trees I can see another parked vehicle just around the bend of white bat. So I'm going to stay out on the right. Yeah. One in front slowing down, I can move over out of the way here, and then back out to the right. Doing a steady 30 in a 30. So there's a dual carriageway with a 30 mile an hour limit. It used to be 40, they slowed many of them down in Birmingham around about 10 to 15 years ago. They took many of the 40 limits out and dropped them down to 30. Now I've got a long space on the left here after this van, so I'm checking the rear mirror, the near mirror, signalling for the vehicle behind, and taking a straight line coming in to the left. Don't whip the wheel across take it fairly straight if you can. The straightest line is the safest and most stable. Looking across the roundabout mirror, now I can't use the right lane here anyway, too many cars on my right, but looking across the roundabout, there are vehicles down there but they're a long way off. So now checking to the right, and I'm using the left lane to go straight on, keeping well over by the left hand curve, watching those coming out carefully from the left, signalling to exit the roundabout. Keeping on the left for a moment until I've checked my rear and offside mirrors. It's safe to move out. The car behind is well back, so I'm not signalling. Lots of parked vehicles at the moment. Mirror. Staying on the right. Looking well up the road, I can see more parked vehicles up there. Uh, traffic moving in lane two. So I'm not going to move in, just to move out again. One of the parkers has come out to join the queue. Now what I'm going to do here is, is just close the gap between myself and the white line. That means that the cars behind cannot pass me on the left and I want to move to the left. I'm not really holding them up. I'm going to signal for the vehicles behind that I'm going to the left and taking a nice straight line into the turn. At the end of the road I plan to turn left. I've got a sign in front of me telling me that I'm coming on to dual cageway here. I'm going to put a signal on because it is permissible to go straight here and it's all clear. Looking vision up straight away, looking way up the road, clear, completely clear, one out following me. Lady on the crossing, just being ready for those lights to change. She may have pressed the button. 
We're fine, we can pick up the speed. Lots of damage in the road here too. Mirror, taking fourth, keeping in the left hand lane. Now I'm looking across the footpath behind the bus shelter up the road. I can see brake lights. Mirror, but there's nothing up there. No one's parked. I'm doing a steady 30. No problems at all here. Now I've got a car on the right with his tail end sticking out. Another one behind him. But there's no one following me close by in lane two. So I'm perfectly safe here. Across the footpath on the left, you can see the lights coming into view, looking behind the bus shelter, and there's no one parked up there. So just slowing down gently now, ready to take a left turn, sharp left turn, and the traffic lights. very important um, when you're driving on dual carriageways is this question of passing on the left hand side um, the highway code I think it's rule 163 tells you when you may pass a vehicle on the left normally of course when you're overtaking you go down the right hand side of the vehicle you're overtaking um, but you will find sometimes you're out driving and somebody else and you're on a dual cage where may be and perhaps you've had to move out, don't quite know what's going on here. School children. Um, perhaps you've had to move out into lane two to uh, to pass a part vehicle. And you're wanting to come back to the left and you find the traffic is now driving down your left hand side. Now there are times when that is permitted and there are times when it is not. It is permitted to pass a vehicle on the left if he's got his right signal on. So you're on a dual carriageway, you're in lane one, the guy in front of you in lane two has signal to turn right, then you may pass. The other occasion is if the traffic is all moving slowly in a queue, then you may pass on the left. Um, as far as I know, there are no other instances when you may pass by, uh, moving vehicles on a dual carriageway on the left hand side. It's a bit of a jam here because people have parked their cars in order to pick up their little darlings and uh, block the road in the process. And Mr Ice Cream Man making the best of it. Pretty shrewd, pretty shrewd business opportunity, I guess. Pull up your ice cream van outside the school when the kids come out. Mom, I want an ice cream. So let's just recap then. If you're on a dual carriageway, you've got traffic in front of you travelling more slowly than you are. Um, but not queuing. They're not pulling up for lights. They're not slowing down for a, um, for a you know, in a queue. Then you can, uh, you must pass on the left. If they're coming to traffic lights and all the brake lights are coming on, let's say in lane two and you're in lane one, then it's okay to pass on the left. Or if the vehicle on your right is turning right, again it's okay to pass on the left. Don't do it. Otherwise, don't do it. On your L test, you will fail pass on the left side without good reason and I've given you the two reasons permitted in the highway code you will fail your test. Now we need to talk about signals. Uh, one has to be very careful about the timing of signals driving on a dual carriageway. The rules for signalling 
on a dual carriageway for, for changing lane are the same as they are for moving off and stopping at the side of the road. You may move off from the side of the road without a signal and you may stop without a signal if there's no traffic to benefit. And it's the same on a dual carriageway, you could change lanes one to two or two to one or even two to three, three to two, without a signal if no one is going to benefit from that signal. If somebody needs that information and if there's somebody behind you fairly close they need the information um, then you should give a signal either to move out to the right or to move back over to the left. The timing of signals is very important. Uh, if you look in your mirrors, say you want to go from lane 1 to lane 2 and you look in your mirrors and there's a car coming past on your left it might be an idea to wait till he's alongside before you put your signal on because if you put your signal on as he's just gaining on you you might panic him and he's going to think you're pulling out in front of him so it's a good thing in that situation just to wait till he's alongside so your signal is not going to panic him, he's not likely to see it and uh, and then you can move over after he's gone by. It's looking more clear on the left now, so I'm checking my mirrors. There's nobody close behind, so I'm moving across without a signal. Now you also have to be very careful about signals where there are junctions. Had I had a car behind me just now and decided to come to the left with a signal, the cars pulling out on my left would think I was turning left. So you have to be particularly wary about the timing of signals where there are junctures off to the right and to the left. I've got somebody belted up behind me in lane one at the moment and lots of traffic in lane two. The way the man's driving behind me is dangerous I think and he's looking for his opportunity to squeeze. Now I'm going to go there's a van parked but there's a junction on the right so I can't signal just yet. Now I'm going to signal and get myself well out into lane two. I'm concerned about the man behind me that was going to try and squeeze between me and the traffic in lane 2 but he has managed to keep control of himself although now he's a bit too close now I've got some uh, traffic lights up ahead which is a crossing just before the roundabout and I'm planning to turn right at the roundabout so I'll use a right hand lane if you're on a dual carriageway and you're going right on a roundabout Normally you're going to use the right hand lane and uh, always be guided by your, how your examiner describes it. Sometimes you might come to a junction that looks straight on but the examiner might say it's a right in which case you position for a right turn. So I'm taking the third exit on the right here. Cageway in one or two minutes. And again, it's a stretch of your cageway I know well, where there are always a line of parked cars. There's got a bit of rain coming on there, so uh, we need to wipe this up. The traffic lights ahead, I'm taking a left. No reason why I shouldn't keep this drive clear here. As the lights are red, the traffic's not moving, I might as well leave the drive clear. In fact, it looks looking at it more closely as though there's room for me to get up to the black car and still leave room behind me for the drive. If you watch the video on uh, following distances, I talk there about cars, drivers sitting with their foot on the brakes, and we have that in front of us now. Taking the left then at uh, the lights. 
Now as we turn in here, there are four lanes, two lanes in each direction, but it isn't dual carriageway because there's no central reservation. And I, therefore as I'm, the two lanes are merging, I've got to watch the car behind me, just over my right shoulder. It is hanging back, we're quite safe. I can see queuing traffic, quite a lot of queuing traffic up ahead. And it might have to do with all these little blobs that are coming along the road. Little primary blobs that are coming along on the footpath on the right. School's out no doubt just now. May as well leave the junction clear on the left. There's no point blocking it. Checking all the mirrors. Another indication that uh, you're approaching a dual carriageway, well in fact I haven't mentioned them yet, but you normally get a sign like the one just coming up on the left, usually a rectangular blue sign with white writing, dual carriageway ahead, and we've got that coming up just now on the left. And then very often when the dual carriageway actually starts, you'll have a keep left arrow on the grassed area in the centre, and very often accompanied by a sign underneath saying dual carriageway. And that's what we'll see just now. So we're on a three lane stretch here, one in this direction, two in the other, but we're approaching dual carriageway. And as we come up, hopefully on the camera you'll see an arrow on the left, a keep left arrow, and it says dual carriageway underneath. Lots of parked vehicles here. So taking lane two straight away, watching Mr. Toyota here. And we've got some green lights ahead. I propose to go left those lights so I'll just close the gap between myself and the white light. I'm going to indicate for following traffic and I can just take a nice straight line in without worrying about cars passing on the left. Must be aware of motorcycles though of course you're leaving them room to do that. So I'm going left here watching the traffic on the right and I know there's parked cars always around this corner so I'm going straight out to lane two to save me struggling to get out further around. Park cars all the way down the road, so staying in lane 2, doing a steady 30. Got a bit of traffic moving away from me ahead, brake lights coming on, pedestrians in the road, and one following. Now as I'm coming up to the roundabout here, there's no problems on the left, but I want to try and see if I can see across the roundabout. I can't. I'm going to take the left hand lane which is the, uh, the default lane. I've got traffic too close behind me to change the lane to anyway now, but looking across the roundabout, it's looking clear on the far side. Always keep yourself, if you use the left-hand lane, well over by the left-hand curve. Have a good look at the lorry driver, because sometimes if you take that position, which you should do, they think you're turning left and pull out in front of you. Park vehicle ahead, mirrors, signal, out we go, one behind me, following me out, mirror. Park vehicle on the left, but then there's nothing, there's a bus further down. Um, now I don't know whether the bus is going to be there when I get there, he's stopping at a bus stop. Because there's that element of doubt, I'm going to stay out here. Now I've got a man planning to undertake, he's come down the left hand side, whether he's not seen the bus or whether he lives here, I don't know. Now he's going to think better of it, no doubt, have to move out to the right again. Change the road surface, mirror. Watching the vehicles right and left. Just keeping back from the bus because he's moving out. The van behind, the car behind did actually turn left. Pedestrians on the left, mirror. Quite a long space on the left here, so I'm going to come back to the left. I can see a vehicle up ahead, which looks as though it might be in the road. No one following me at all, so I can move back out to the right without needing of a signal, and I'm clear of the bus, and uh, I can see parked vehicles ahead, so I'm staying out here, just around the bend by the traffic lights is another mirror, uh, where I propose to go, sorry, another, uh, another roundabout, where I propose to go straight ahead, mirror. Now I know again from experience on this stretch of road, of course if you don't know, you don't know, but 
I happen to know from experience that there's cars parked on the far side of this roundabout just about always. So I'm going to take the right hand lane. That saves me struggling to get over if there's not much room and somebody follows me into the turn. I'm in lane one trying to get to lane two. If I stay out here, looking to the right as I come to the roundabout, of course, have a space there. We're going to take that. We're going to keep close to the roundabout. Checking my mirrors, making my signal to leave the roundabout and coming up in lane two. So now I'm not boxed in behind that green colour. And I'm on dual cageway still, but that's going to come to an end, an end just by the lights there. So checking the mirrors, closing the gap by the white, get to the white line, and now I can move in. There's no one on the left, I can move in, and I don't need a signal this time. There's no one to benefit from it at all. I'm following the road ahead. In fact, a left signal there would have looked like I was making a left turn. Following the road ahead. So there it is, there's the uh, video for dual carriageways. It's no substitute for doing it, of course. It's just meant to be some information, some reminders, some of the things to watch out for uh, to accompany your practice on dual carriageways. I hope you find that helpful, and we'll end it here.